All right. So, hi guys. Um good day, no. And we are here now to discuss about um, business succession. And our topic for today will be the input vat. So, um, as you can remember, no, ang aton nga last nga video is about uh, output vat, no. Um and uh, tawag dito in the ano aton nga vat model, no, aton nga value added tax model. Mera kita dito output VAT, no? less input VAT, then less ang mga tax credits will be the VAT payable. No? So today, we're going to discuss about ano-ano bala ang content ng input VAT, how will be, um, how to account properly the input VAT, and paano siya maging um, valid, no? nga claimable nga input VAT, and what are the, uh, the different input VAT nga pwede natin maklaim as a VAT taxpayer. Okay, so let's start on defining first what is an input tax. No? Um, input um, tax means that, um, or input VAT, refers to the VAT due or paid by a VAT registered pers person or in importation or local purchases of goods, um, properties or services, including lease or use of properties in the course, um, hobbies trade or um, business. So kinanglan nga ano no um, kung ang at, aton nga output vat no um, amo na siyang aton nga parang um, ta, uh, vat on the sales no sa aton nga sa aton nga mga ginbaligyan sa aton customer dire sa in, uh, input vat amo naman ni siya yang aton nga mga um, purchases um, and expenses no pagbakal aton sa aton nga mga salakyan nga ginagamit sa business no pwede na siya natin maklaim as a um, input VAT. Okay? So how to determine the input VAT? So the VAT on purchase is usually reflected as the separate item no in the VAT invoice of a VAT official receipt issued by a VAT registered supplier. And please take note guys nga you cannot claim input VAT no? if ang nag-issue is not a VAT registered supplier or VAT registered um, seller no it's very important to take note no na ang number one rule in claiming an input vat is dapat si seller or si supplier is a vat registered supplier no important tingin na nga si um, ang nagbaligya sa aton no ang nagrender sang service sa aton is a vat registered no kasi kung hindi you cannot claim anything no sa ilang nga input vat so what if the VAT is not separately indicated? So if the VAT is not billed separately, the selling price stated in the sales document shall be deemed to be inclusive of the VAT. No? What does it mean? Now, in writing a official receipt, kung mapansin nyo, no, kung kagabakal ka mo sa Kaysano or sa mga malls or different ng mga um, big companies, i-check nyo bala ang resibo. Naka-separate indicate, naka-separate account, or no ang vat sa atong naging purchase so kay mo na siya ang supposed to be um, proper way in billing us no sa atong naging gamit or atong naging bakal sa ila dapat naka separate ang vat para ma, ma ano ma, magamit nato in case nga ginagamit siya for the business we can claim that no and we can use that also sa atong nga um, vat na payments okay and um, the reason for it is that para ma-identify man naton as as consumers no if how much ang aton nga ginabayad nga value added tax sa government no pero kung wala siya naka-indicate nga separate indication kung sa din ang VAT din ang aton price ng aton nga goods no it is deemed no um considered as VAT inclusive so, kung baga ang price nga ginhatag sa aton is inclusive na nadala na da ang value added tax next creditable input VAT no um, not all input VAT paid on purchases is creditable or deductible against the output VAT. Nga man, number one, if ang aton nga ginbakal or ang aton nga ginpurchase, although VAT registered person atong ginbakla na ton, if atong ginbakal ta is wala na ton ginagamit sa business or ginagamit na ton siya on our personal means, no? you cannot claim that as an input VAT. Right? Y um accounting entity theory you have to separate business no from personal 
um, expenses or personal entity para um, hindi magkaroon ng confusion between your personal and your business ng mga transactions. <clears throat> Next, what are those um, requisites no para makagkaroon tayo sa ginatawag na creditable or creditable input VAT? Number one, the input VAT must have been paid or incurred in the course of trade or business. Dapat ginagamit sa negosyo. No? Next will be um, the VAT is evidenced by a VAT invoice or an official receipt. Dapat may resibo. No? You cannot claim anything um, from a supplier no? or sa mga nag-render sa itong service if they did not issue an official receipt or an sales invoice. Although VAT registered siya and wala siya nag-issue, we cannot claim anything from it. No? So very important nga nag request or nag-ask kita for am um, resibo. Next, the VAT invoice or receipt must be issued by a VAT registered person ng hambal ko kagina. No? Dapat si supplier is a VAT registered person. And input VAT is incurred in relation to the VATable sales, not from exempt sales. No? We have already discussed ano-ano ang mga exempt na transactions. No? Once ginabilang siya dito, you cannot claim anything from it. Okay? <clears throat> Next, what are those um, types of input VAT? Number one, transitional input VAT. Next, the regular input VAT. No? Next, the amortization deferred input VAT, presumptive, standard, and input VAT carryover. So, isa isa ang tam. First, on the in um, on the transitional input VAT. All right. Now, what is a transitional input VAT? Number one, a person who becomes liable to value-added tax or any person who elects to be a VAT registered person shall be given an initial input tax credit equivalent to 2% of the beginning inventory of goods, materials, or supplies of the actual VAT paid thereon, whichever is higher. What does it mean? Okay. Number one, if um, we are, um, inagana siya yung ginatawag transitional, no? if we are transitioning from a percentage taxpayer into a value added taxpayer no um, the bir gives us um, a transitional input fat of 2% no 2% of the beginning inventory sang goods no naging butang ta sa aton nga um, parang business right and please take note that we cannot claim any transitional input fat if ang ginbakla naton before is um, not registered na VAT taxpayer. No? It's very important nga ang ibaklan is a VAT taxpayer. So the value allowed for income tax purposes on inventory shall be the basis of the computation of 2% transitional input VAT. No? Goods exempt from VAT shall be excluded in the computation of the transitional input VAT. So in short, no, <clears throat> the transitional input VAT is based on the beginning inventories. Beginning inventories in the month of registration as a VAT taxpayer. So from non-VAT to VAT, tax pre, VAT taxpayer, no? ang aton nga beginning inventory shall be the basis for the 2% transitional um, input VAT. So what are the ras rationale of that transitional input VAT? So first, non-VAT taxpayers are not allowed to claim input VAT. Tama. No? It's because we are not, we, when you are a percentage taxpayer, you are not claiming um, anything of VAT no, sa aton ng mga suppliers but we are charged no, at um, 3% percentage tax no? but um, because of that um, pandemic para nagkaroon ng changes no? na naging 1% na lang percentage tax. So we are not um, claiming anything for our purchases or aton expenses. So the, the BIR gives us that transitional input VAT no? na pwede na magamit on the um, pag-transition ta from non-VAT to VAT. Okay? So, however, the sales or pre-VAT registration inventory become instantly VATable after they register a VAT taxpayer. So, as such, the law deem it equitable for them to be give, given an incentive no, for a transitional input VAT. So, however, it must be noted that VAT except goods are not subject to output VAT when sold. Tama. No? So hence, there would be no basis to claim transitional input VAT of them. Okay, kung ang aton nga goods na ginbakal is a VAT exempt one. So we are not claiming anything from it. Kasi at the first place, its nature is exempted. No? Wala, wala output, wala input. 
All right. So timing of credit of transitional input what? So the transitional input what? Shall be claimable on the month of registration as a VAT taxpayer. Okay. So automatic, once you na registered as a VAT taxpayer, you are automatically given the 2% nga transitional input VAT. But no, um, it is very important nga na account properly ang beginning inventory. No? Kasi ang magiging basis niya is like the financial statement nga ginaprepare naton. No? Kasi based on the records na. Okay? So what are those requisites to claim for transitional? Number one, the taxpayer must submit an inventory list of goods. No? Then na siya, it, the BIR is very strict about it. No? Kasi we have to, to, to have that inventory list ngayon patatakan sa ila. Next, the taxpayer must prepare an entry recognizing the transitional input what credit in his accounting books. No? The same way recording with the output and output what. Next kind of input what is the regular input what, the, the common one. No? So the regular input what is the 12% on purchase of goods or services no? or properties or importation of goods and um, services. As in, maging butang ko tingin table. No? What are the timing of credit of regular input fat? Number one, sa goods or properties on the month of purchase, regardless if paid or not. Ha? Kasi um, hindi siya tax, uh, hindi sa cash basis. No? Sa purchase of services, services um, in the month paid, okay? regardless if advance payment siya or not. Importation of goods on the month VAT is paid. Okay? Um, purchases of the depreciable um, capital goods or properties. Like for example, like bakal kasalakyan. No? The cost of that car is at least more than a million. Again, gamit mo siya sa business. How do we claim that? Okay? How do we claim that um, VAT? No? So input VAT, I mean. So in general uh, treatment, in the month of purchase. So when the monthly aggregate acquisition cost exceeds 1 million no amortized useful life of or 6 months whichever is shorter no ang ang ginaklaim ta na parang cost niya na magiging basis for the 12% is the um depreciation kasi ginaamortize ta siya right so atong um atong depreciation is like its value no over that um span of time para makaklaim kita that input what okay purchase of non depreciable not creditable, like mga personal. Okay? Next, input what on purchase of capital goods or properties, like mga real properties. How do we claim that? No? So if the monthly aggregate acquisition cost of depreciable capital goods, number one, does not exceed 1 million. No? Wala siya naglapa 1 million. So the VAT is claimable on the month of purchase. So meaning, maklaim ka get uh, maklaim ka gade sang um, maklaim ka gade on the month of purchase right if naglapaw siya 1 million then that's the time na mga makaklaim kita sinang useful life nga base sa iya nga useful life ka depreciation or not max uh, not more than 60 months or 5 years so ang tawag sina deferred input fund all right kasi gina-delay siya eh. hindi mo siya maklaim agad-agad huh? Kumbaga, ginagabasis ka sa um, depreciation niya in order to claim that input VAT. Monthly aggregate acquisition cost. Ano na siya? So the monthly aggregate acquisition cost of depreciable capital goods refers to the total price excluding VAT. No? Agreed upon one or more assets acquired in not the payments or installment actually made during the calendar month. And the term depreciable capital goods refers to goods or properties with estimated useful life for more than one year, which are treated as depreciable assets. Bala nyo na, common sa accounting. No? <clears throat> for income tax purposes, is directly or indirectly the production of sale of taxable goods or um, services. What do you mean by monthly aggre um, aggregate acquisition cost? No? <clears throat> Kung baga nagbakal ka sa assets, depreciable goods, no? um, sa isa ka month, no? and naglapaw siya 1 million, then that's the time nga ma-amortize. If ang total niya does not exceed 1 million, so makaklaim ka um, on the month of purchase. Alright? Next, sale or transfer of depreciable capital goods within 5 years. 
So what if gin transfer mo, gin baligya mo no, or gin retire mo ang asset. So if the depreciable property <coughs> is sold or transferred within five years before the exhaustion of the amortizable input tax thereon, so the in, an, entire unamortized input tax no can be claimed as input tax credit during the calendar month of the quarter when the sale or transfer was um, made. Um, for example, nang nagbakal ka sa lakyan no to be used in the business and it costs you about 2 million so more than so 1 million so you will amortize that based on his life or 5 years whichever is um parang lower uh, lower now whichever is lower lower ba yeah whichever is shorter okay so yun if in baligya mo siya nga wala mo pa matapos amortize no um you can claim the total unamortized input tax on the month of the sale or the transfer. Next, scheduled phase out of the amortization treatment. So under the training law, sa atun nga bagong tax law, the amortization treatment of deferred input VAT, VAT will be phased out effective January 1, 2022. So yan, na na. No? Previously recognized, deferred input, input VAT will be continued to be amortized even after that date, but the deferral treatment will be stopped. Kapag nag-purchase ka capital goods after the January 1, 2022, you cannot claim anymore that deferred input but But if claim ka na yan before, no? before that date, and nag-continue siya until 2023, no? you can still claim kaya naka, nag-start kaya before that January 1, 2022. Next, special rules on input tax credit. One, non-depreciable non vehicles. Construction in progress, purchase of real property, purchase of goods and properties deemed sold. All right, so input VAT on non-depreciable vehicles. No? So rules on deductibility of depreciation expenses on vehicles. One, only one vehicle no, for land transport is allowed for the use of an official or employee. So the value of which should not exceed 2,400,000. So no depreciation should be allowed to yachts, ngaman, helicopters, airplanes, or aircrafts, because they are considered as luxury goods, no? um, which exceed 2,400,000 thresholds, unless the taxpayers may now a business is transport in operation or gabaligya siya sina. Okay? Kasi they are considered as um, luxury already. Okay? The purchase must be substantial with sufficient evidence such as official receipts or adequate records. And the direct connection of relation in the vehicles to the development, operation, or conduct of the trade or business. Ang muna siyang ginamin ko nga when you buy a car no, and gamitan mo siya for personal usage, um, you cannot claim anything from it unless um, you can prove to the BIR nga ginagamit mo siya no, for the sake of the operations ng aton nga business. Non-conformance of this requisite shall render the vehicles non-depreciable. So meaning you cannot claim anything from it. You cannot put it in your financial statements under the uh, BIR. No? So the input part in the purchase of non-depreciable vehicles okay, are likewise disallowed. Right? Meaning per day. Next, input what <coughs> on construction and progress. So Imagine, oh, when you are building a, uh, uh, when you are building a a, a large, uh, na, building, no, pilaka floor ng building, right? Um, paano mo na siya sukton? Kung ikaw ang contractor, how will you build the ano, the your client, right? Hindi mana pwede nga uh, once kana enter ka mo sa contract, kapitalan mo lang dana, then pulihin na lang bayaran ni ano ni client mo. Hindi mana siya pwede, cause it will be costly on your part. No? But instead, may ara kita ginatawag na uh, progress billing, no? Which is common sa aton ginatawag na construction accounting. Okay? So, da, sa dra sa progress billing, amo na siya ginatawag na construction in progress. Okay? okay? So, so first floor natapos na, mabil ka naman. Second floor natapos mo na, mabil ka. Okay? Third floor, mabil ka naman. So, anong mga input what ka pwede mo maklaim? At ang mga materials na ginagamit mo on building that certain different level floor level or different floors 
So construction in progress is the cause of uncompleted construction work of an asset. Now this is the accumulated progress billing of the contractor to the extent of completion of an asset under construction. So upon completion of the construction activity, the construction in progress account is declassified to an appropriate asset account. It's either building na siya. No? Kasi kung sa, sa accounting ta, um, you, when, when you construct a building, you cannot um, automatically put that no? sa ginatawag nga account, nga land and building. No? You cannot put that in sigita. But um, you can separately account that as a construction in progress. Kasi once an, 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 an asset or a building is um, a construction in progress, no? in account mo siya as con, uh, construction in progress, you cannot depreciate it. Okay? Kasi when, when we classify no? how to depreciate an asset, no? paano ta makastart depreciate, is dapat kompleto na siya and nadala mo na siya in its intended usage. No? All installations are completed sa ina ng certain nga asset. Excuse me. So hence the input tax is creditable upon payment of each progress billing. Now each progress billing of the contractor is neither credited upon the completion of construction nor amortized over a period not more than 60 months. Dapat based ka sa progress billing ma magamit sa ginatawag na um, input VAT. Next, input VAT on purchase of real property on installment. Nagbakal ka duta via installment. So if the seller of real property is subject to VAT on the sale of deferred payment basis, not on installment plan, the input VAT shall be claimable by the buyer at the time of execution of the instrument of sale, no? subject to the amortization rule on depreciable properties. However, if the purchase is by installment, kagina yan, not installment. What if, what if installment? No? Kung not installment, um, you can use that no automatically at tong 60 months rule no but if installment the seller is allowed to build the output vat in installment but the buyer can also claim the input vat in the same period as the seller recognizes the output vat so kung paano niya i-claim ang output niya ni seller among mana dapat nga manner ang pagclaim mo sang imo nga input vat so in other words the output vat appearing on every billing statement of the seller at every installment which the buyer is obliged to pay is the input VAT na pwede mo ma-claim. Okay? Next, input VAT on goods or properties deemed sold. Atong tanda nyo to, ang deemed sold. No? Atong mga different scenarios na ginamakonsidered mo siya as deemed sold. No? So the claimable input VAT on goods and properties previously deemed sold shall be the portion of the output VAT imposed upon the goods deemed sold corresponds to the goods purchased by the buyer. So 12% siya itong value niya. Okay? As if ginbaligya mo siya. Okay? Next, presumptive input VAT. Ano naman yung presumptive input VAT? No? Um, persons or firms engage in the processing of sardines. Take note of this. Sardines, mackerel, milk, in the, and in the manufacturing of refined sugar, cooking oil, pack noodle-based instant meals. No? Amula na siya ang gin-dictate ni law. So meaning, amula na inyo sundot. Shall be allowed a presumptive input tax equivalent to 4% of the gross value in money of their purchase of, remember also, take note, of, take note of this, primary agricultural products which are used in their production. Agricultural products. Okay, ano-ano na sila? Sa sardinas. Okay. When you buy a tomato, in making the tomato sauce, no, especially if silang gakrei isang tomato sauce, it is generally exempted. It's because ang farmers is exempted from paying the business tax. No? But because large scale ang ila production, they are given 4% of that gross value pag bakalila silang sardinas and um, tomatoes. Right? So the term processing means pasteurization, canning, no? Bala nyo na na kung anong processing. Um, which through physical or chemical process alter the exterior texture or form of the inner substance. Okay? So the presumptive input VAT is a tax incentive in those processors of VAT exempt raw materials into processed food products. Diba? So parang incentive ni government on them. Kasi without them, no, 
uh, parang hindi man mabuligan ang farmers. No? It's like a win-win situation kasi makaklaim sila at the same time they are using the products of our um, local farmers. Next, standard input VAT, though na, na discuss ko na nagani before, no, sa tong sa government, standard input VAT is always uh, is always used, no, sa aton nga ginatawag na GOCCs and mga LGUs. So the sale of goods and services to the government, no, or any of its political subdivisions, instrumentalities or agencies shall be subject to a 5% withholding VAT. Tama? And ang remaining, no, muna siyang parang magiging presumed nga parang output niya. Okay? And then, ang VAT payable, I mean, sorry. Kasi 12% less 5% nga input, kasi it's like the standard input VAT, no, ang 5%, muna siya magiging VAT payable. So, the government or GOCCs, no, before making the payment in remit the same days, the same within 10 days following the end of the month of the withholding was made. Now, the 5% withheld shall be deemed the actual VAT payable of the seller. So due to the final withholding VAT, the sellers of the government no, can effectively claim 7% of sales as input VAT. Okay. So the actual input VAT in the sale of government will have been increased to go or decreased to conform to the amount of the standard input VAT. So adjustment is close to expense or loss, income or um, gain. Okay. Next, input VAT carryover. Ano ang kinatawag na input VAT carryover? So the input VAT carryover no, is the excess of input VAT over the output VAT in a particular month. For example, January, output VAT mo, 10,000. Output VAT mo, a ah, input VAT mo, I mean, is 15,000. So output niya 10, least 15 na input, you have a negative VAT na 5K. So what shall you do with that? No, amo na siya ginatawag nga input VAT carryover. We will claim that excess on um, February, on the month of February. So it is the VAT overpayment that appears after the tax credits and payments are deducted against the net VAT payable. So what are the rules no, on that input VAT carryover? So the input VAT carryover of the prior quarter is deductible on the first month of the current quarter. No? The carryover of the first month is deductible in the second month. Tama. Ang second month of a quarter is not deductible to the third month of the quarter, but considered na siya sa next month. No? First month of the next quarter. The carryover of the prior quarter is deductible on the third month quarterly balance of the present quarter. Okay. So what are excluded from input VAT carryover? Number one, advanced VAT, which had been applied for a tax credit certificate. No? Zero rated claims. Masa tanang yung zero rated. You cannot use that for the input VAT carryover. No? Now last, um, rules on claim for credit of input VAT. Number one, specific identification. So input VAT that can be traced to a particular sales or credited against the output VAT of such sales or gain account properly in issuing the receipts. Or the prorata allocation, no? Ano, 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 ano naman yung prorata allocation? So it is the amount of input tax due or paid that cannot be directly and entirely attributable to any one of the sales transactions. No? It shall be allocated proportionately on the basis of the sales. Okay, so kung mixed transactions na siya. Right? So that would be the end of my discussion about input fat. So if you have queries, please feel... Um, Please feel free to message me anytime. So thank you guys and have a nice day everyone.